Hey. I, I don't even know how to how to start this video, man. If if you know me, I I'm terrible at trying to get my thoughts into words for anything really, and even more so for something that I love so dearly. And yes, Paper Mario is a game series that I just fucking love. Well, so here we go. I have a bunch of categories to go through. <laughs> so let's start them, shall we? <laughs> All right. I love the series. I love it a lot. I don't. How am I gonna enter this, man? <laughs> uh, let's see. What's my intro gonna be like? Well, welcome to watching this. Uh, welcome to my review of the Paper Mario series. This is gonna be so fucking terrible. <laughs> anyway, welcome. My name's Mutt. You probably already know me. By watching this. But if not, welcome. I love Paper Mario probably more than any game series that I've played. So yeah, uh, it's not going to be much doing today, I'm just going to review the entire series, because I played them all. Uh, most of them I haven't played ever. No. Only two of them I haven't played ever. So yeah, let's, let's start it with uh, this. So the first category I'm going to do is... Just how I like them. Which ones that I liked the most and which ones didn't I like. Uh, let's start with the first one. Paper Mario. Well, if it was 64. I, I loved this game. I'm going to put it right there. For now. Um, I, di I didn't start with this game. I... I think the only console I ever had was... At the time, was the uh, Game Boy. I don't even know, fucking know about the N64. At the time, yeah, I only had a Game Boy Color at the time. I didn't even know about the N64. And then, I believe the first time I played this was when I had the Wii U. In 2014, I saw this game in the eShop and was like, yeah, I'll try it. And I thoroughly loved it. It wasn't a good, like, gripping story. It was more like just a, uh, a kid's graphic novel. It's full of light-hearted jokes and... It's full of like, light-hearted jokes and uh, other stuff. I'm butchering this so badly. <laughs> Lighthearted jokes. Uh, great character design. Simple to follow. Not hard to grasp at anything. But yeah, I, I, lo I love this. This was a great first game to the series. It was an amazing first game to the series. It's a little broken when you really get into it. But other, other than that, it's a solid game. And one that I would very much like to play again. So, I'm going to put that right there, in A, because it deserves to be put in A. Anything deserves to be put, <laughs> actually, kind of deserves to be put in the S, but talking about my opinions. Actually, yes, 
for a first game of the series is pretty good. Already starting off, I'm second guessing myself. Oh, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. Without a doubt, S. Fucking amazing game. Matter of fact, move over. There we go. <laughs> I love Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. Uh, reasons? It's the first Paper Mario game I ever even played. Whoopsies. So yeah, that was the first Paper Mario game I ever ever played. I think I'm, I think I was blind to it until about like when I actually start when I actually played the second game and I started like looking into the into like what I want what I like about games. So as a kid, I just kind of like, wow, that's cool, and just kind of jumped jumped into it. It was like it was either like the motion of how 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 he reviews games as a kid is like, ah, eh, this is pretty good, and it's, eh. it's like, man, I like this game too. Eh, it's kind of boring, kind of boring and not fun. And that's like really the two, like the the flip a coin is like, is it good or is it bad? And if it was bad, I didn't really play it that much. But if it was good enough. I played it, and Paper Mario Thousand Door is the one that I played the most. I just, I, I fucking love it, man. I, I love it. Everything about it is just so good. The story, the characters, the writing is amazing. It's just that <laughs> the gameplay, like the. Um, uh, the fighting, the combat is fucking stellar. You can customize literally every aspect of what you can do about the fight, about the fighting and combat. Some parts random when you get better and get more level ups. Uh, stage hazards are amazing, and they get more hectic as you level up. Fucking meteor comes out of outer space to like say, "Hey, whoa." This is getting a little hectic in here. You need to chill out. You're being that gay, being that guy, a little too easily. And it's just like it was such so good. Like this, like Paper Mario Thousand Door was treated more of like a play, as what Scott Falco said. Yeah, it was treated more of like of like a play with paper aesthetics. Well, Paper Mario just kind of felt like a book with paper aesthetics. Paper Mario Thousand Door felt like an actual play. You sat down and even like, and like even cemented that with the audience becoming a part of becoming a part of the combat. You would be flashy to the crowd so they give you more points. You, they can throw stuff at you for whatever reason. If you're terrible or they're the bad guys, <laughs> they can even throw you good things like mushrooms and honey syrups. First two games are S tier right the bat. Yeah, they are. And for good reason. They're amazing games. I highly recommend you play them if you, if you can. I cannot say enough about with, with my ability to like speak. <laughs> about things that I love. I cannot say enough about why I think these two games are the best in the entire fucking series. And they're the first two games! Paper Mario Thousand Year Door saw what Paper Mario did and said, yo, what if we made it better? Yeah, what, like, seriously, like, what if you made it better? And it's like, what if it's not a two in there? It's good, it's really good. Everything for the combat, the story, the characters. Level design is more has something to be desired of, but <laughs> everything else oversha overshadows that one that one griping flaw. Also, hello, Reverse Match. How are you doing today? <laughs> Please be patient. I'm. <laughs> it's really hard for me to do this. Yeah, I. Out of out of all out of all these games, 
Paper Mario and Paper Mario Thousand Year Door are the two games that I would want to play over and over and over and over again. Just to get like better, to see how much I can break the game. Break the game with how good it is, like, and just fucking... Parrying is so good! I... <laughs> parrying is so good! It rewards you for being good at blocking. So hey, here's a, here's a better control. I'm going ahead of myself. I have a lot more fucking categories. So yeah, first two games, amazing. Play them. Uh, Super Paper Mario. Uh, five. You know what? I'm gonna leave those as is. Super Paper Mario is the biggest disappointment. Not, not, no. Okay, that, that is completely wrong. It is not the biggest disappointment. We have two more games that are even more of a disappointment than, than Super Paper Mario. Super Paper Mario wanted to be different. It wanted to be more like Mario. In the Mario games, but with this, but with Mario and it's Mario, 2D Mario games, and said, hey, what if you just put a spin on that? And just kind of threw away the entire, uh, the entire RPG format while still keeping it. The story's great. It the story was really interesting, but a lot of the things just didn't click with it. I hated the level design. I hated some of the, I hated most I hated some of the characters. Everyone that wasn't in the like the main star list I hated. It, it was fucking terrible. Well, some of them. I I, I liked the uh, I liked the giant dragon in the, in the first level. And the fact that he had to <laughs> he had to access the Wii Play Store, <laughs> the Wii Play Store to uh <laughs> to confirm that hey, you're the hero. Uh, other than that, it's just, it's an interesting game, and I would recommend you play it, but only to just see what it is. It's like, if you're, if you're interested in it, you can play it. I'm not gonna test you for it. I'd, I'd test you to play Paper Mario Thousand Year Door and Paper Mario 64, but not as much as Super Paper, Super Paper Mario. It's like, it's really interesting. The story is amazing. I already said that. The characters are amazing. The writing is still good in some instances uh other than that it's just it feels like a slog to get through which is weird because each chapter is like shorter than this game is like the shortest out of all of them it goes by so fast but it still feels like you're crawling at a snail's pace but i still i still like it i still like it i like the pixels I like the character interactions, but that it, it just could have been a much better game. I actually I I liked the the three D aspect of switching axes axes of switching axes to be like, hey, you can ha you can turn the plane around and see hidden stuff. That was interesting. Uh, kind of actually it was it was kind of interesting, and they. I don't think they really delivered it on how it could really be good. But yeah, it's it's mostly a disappointment of what they try to do with it. Uh Sticker Star I, I hate Sticker Star. 
I hate it with a fiery passion. Everything about it. Like... I, I haven't I haven't played it like much at all. I really just did that one stream, and then I got to one combat point, and the game said, "Hey, would you like to do more attacks?" Yeah, I would. Well, here, have a roulette wheel. <laughs> have a roulette wheel that will let you. This no. I'm 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 sorry, Dicegate, but this is not. <laughs> This is not the stream to be to be playing uh, Smell of the Game. <laughs> yeah, Sticker Star is a fucking terrible game, and I don't understand why they keep trying to reproduce it. And yeah, I say keep because Origami King is pretty much the same thing as Sticker Star, but with a new coat of paint. Which is weird because the, <laughs> which is weird because, <laughs> color splash goes right up, right up next to uh, actually it goes in front of Super Paper Mario. <laughs> color splash is just such a, a way much better game than Sticker Star ever was. I still hate it. It's like it, uh, fucking ah. Uh. Makes me angry. It's like you have two you have two good games up here. You made two good games and you want it to be fresh and made it terrible. It's just fucking annoying. Also, yes, I am skipping Rose because <laughs> I don't know. I don't wanna put them in like separate rows. I just I'm like ranking them how I how I like about them. That's not a top ten list. This is not a top ten list. No, if it was a top ten list, it go pretty much how it is. But yeah, Color Splash is so far the best sticker star. It's sticker star too, but with paint. Uh, did you get a chance to see the treehouse? Uh, I did not, but I know Way Forward is making a Bakugan game. And uh, my first response was, "Why is Way Forward making a licensed game?" Whatever. Uh, wait, is is this is this reference about Treehouse streaming the Paper Mario game? I saw enough of it. And I wasn't liking what I saw, but I'll 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 get into that later. Yeah, this 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 is so far is how, is how I think about the games. Thousand Year Door, fucking amazing game. It has some faults with the uh, gameplay, but all of its, in my opinion, all all of its um. All of its faults are overshadowed with every other aspect. Story, characters, design, aesthetics, combat especially. <laughs> so fucking amazing. Uh, Paper Mario 64, really solid game for the first in the series. Nothing is really wrong about it. Of course, there are ways you can break the game, which you can... <laughs> <laughs> which you can watch videos on uh, I forgot I forget what his name was also sorry please crash paper Mario strider 7x that's his name I love all his videos. You can watch him break the entire game. Also, uh, I forgot to get rid of this. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, in B we have Color Splash and Super Paper Mario. Super Paper Mario is a good game with bad execution. 
and Color Splash is a bad game with great execution. The writing is amazing, the visuals are amazing, gameplay sucks, it's boring, and sometimes tedious. Uh, the characters are well written, albeit lacking in the variety, which ever since Ticker Star, yes. Uh, but yeah, I'd recommend trying it out if you have interest in it. Sticker Star, stay the fuck away from Sticker Star. Don't even pay attention to it. Just ignore it exists like the developers did with um, Metroid Other M. They didn't... <laughs> they didn't even look at um, Metroid Prime series. They said, nah. We can make a better game, and look how that turned out. Anyway, enough about Cry this is a this is a Metroid, this is a Metroid uh, series. Um, but yeah, that's that's the first one. This is, this is just the tier list of how how I like them. So yeah, go play the first two. B if you're interested. Terrible, just fucking stay away from it, man. All right, next one. Story. Delete row, delete row, delete row. Actually, no. Add a row, add a row above. Add a row below. So yeah, this this is basically the summary of of how, of how these uh how these stories go. Whoa. -oh. Whoa, Bowser's at it again. Bowser's at it again. And that is one, two, three. Three games that I go, I go, I go under this formula, which. I mean, it's I don't hate it. The first one does it very the first one does it very well, but it's just kind of like why? Bowser says I want like, for these two, Bowser says I want that and then gets possessed with power. Like there was no plan. He just decided I am the main antagonist now. Yeah. <laughs> power me up, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, in stick in color splash, he just he, he doesn't even want to be the antagonist. He was just like, man, I want a cool rainbow shell, <laughs> and gets possessed with black paint. <laughs> in uh, in Paper Mario sixty four, uh. Actually, I know I'll, I'll 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 keep color splash there. Uh, the first this one. We gotta stop the evil demon. We gotta stop the evil demon. Gotta stop evil, evil demon from taking over the world. Taking over the world. <laughs> and that is, uh. Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. Uh, Paper Jam is not included. Probably because it is a Mario and Luigi game. But! Uh, it is included somewhere else in one of these tier lists. But I'll get to that later. But yeah, this <laughs> this is basically this 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 tier list is not really tier list, but this is just basically summarizing 
what each story is. Whoa, oh, Bowser's at it again. <laughs> a a gon. A gaon. Bowser's at it again, which means Bowser is the main antagonist and fucked everything up because he wanted. He wanted something. <laughs> In the first game, he wanted. He wanted the ultimate power to grant his wishes. In Sicker Star, he wanted this. This, the comet star because it looks shiny I guess and color splash is even worse because he just wanted a cool rainbow shell <laughs> and uh this is Super Paper Mario's plot uh oh <laughs> we gotta stop Guys, not even thinking over the world. You gotta stop. Evil demon. Demon from taking over the world. No, not taking over the world. From destroying all worlds. From destroying all worlds. And it's just like. It feels like there was a disconnect between these two games and these games. And I, I, I fully understand, like, a darker story is, hell, is a lot more interesting. Evil demon from taking over the world. And of course, gotta say Princess Peach too. But in Super Paper Mario, we say Princess Peach like... Fuck, it was, she's the last character we have. No, she's not the last character. We say Princess Peach, kinda, in the second chapter, I think. Yeah, before the second chapter. So yeah, this this is just all the, the stories about it. And both of these are, both of these top two games are amazing. Amazing and this one's more well written than this one. So, some of the line some of the lines are delivered kind of flat in my opinion but um what oh bowser uh oh bowser's at it again which isn't bad Th this premise is not bad it has worked for nintendo a lot of times <laughs> but um paper mario 64 does it a lot better than these two games ever did. In this one, Bowser has a lot more of a character in this game. And these two, he just seems like some kind of jerk. Some kind of a jerk. <laughs> some kind of jerk. This is, it says, I want it. Tough nubs, get out of here. <laughs> Alright. I think that's all I can do for this one. Next! Oh boy. What should I make this one? Combat! Combat. Smoking. Smoking sexy style. Dismal. That is not how you spell dismal. Cool. Badass. Alright, well first of all, you already know where this is going. <laughs> That one goes there. This mole. <laughs> oh, this is going out. <laughs> this is going fast. 
Uh, I forget what A is for Devil May Cry. Hold on. DMC 5 A. Style ranks. Dismal. Crazy. Badass. Apocalyptic. Savage. Six skills. Smoking sexy style. Uh, I wouldn't call. But yeah, actually, I'm gonna. <laughs> Wait, that's the wrong one. Crazy. That's not how you spell apocalyptic. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, autocorrect. But yeah! Combat is fucking amazing in Thousand Year Door. You can customize literally every aspect of how you fight. You can give yourself more moves. You can give yourself more health, more fight, more, more, uh, special meter. You can give your more flower points. You can give a, you can give you a badge that gives you more level up chance. You can make things harder, harder for you harder for yourself with the unsimplifier diamond dodge makes things a lot easier to block no it reduces the things when you block it reduces the amount of damage you take when you block you can have a badge that makes the crowd cheer more you can have a badge that uh have badge that makes you do more damage but without with one like one uh hammer or one one get to do more, do more damage with your hammer while sacrificing jumps or get to do more damage with your jumps but sacrificing hammer abilities you can make yourself immune to spikes which is just i just love the combat in fucking <laughs> Paper Mario a Thousand Year Door. It's just so good and satisfying. Especially the parrying. It's like, it doesn't do much, but you don't take any damage. You redirect it back to you. Like you, re you redirect it back to the enemy, which does one damage or doesn't do anything. Depending on what attack it is. All in all, you don't take any damage. It's like you're successful. You are uh, granting someone a reward by making it more risky, and that and that risk is amazing because you don't take any damage. If you block things, it just takes off one point, and he says even more about Paper Mario a Thousand Year Door, uh, Paper Mario sixty four, because it, this is just vanilla. This is chocolate. This is vanilla. <laughs> Like, they they just up the ante of what you can do in battles in Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. This was kind of baseline. This is what you can do. This is what you can add to it. And most of it was just power stats and... It was just power stats and... Uh, power-ups. Just basically power-ups. This one, you could do almost anything if you had enough badge points. You could have 10 health and have 10 health, 10 FP, and have a bajillion badge points and you could still win. Because that's how powerful badges were that were in that game. These... Sticker Star is fucking terrible. I've said it again. Needing to go up on chance to get an extra turn. When in, when in Color Splash, they just give you it. It's just I, I don't I don't know what their thought process was for this game. Like, this game had had good intentions it wanted to play more on the crafts craft aspect sides but 
the execution of this game was fucking terrible. And... Super Mario is fun when you know how to, like, when you know what to do. It's just, it's more of, like, an arena fighter, but, like, it's still boring some of the times. Fighting the bosses are fun, but normal enemies... Uh, why? 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 Another thing that Boner Reed actually, po actually pointed out is that Exacerbated numbers are not good for RPGs. They mean nothing. Honestly. Like in the final boss of Paper Mario 64 is Bowser. And he has 100 health. 100, 100 health points. That feels impossible compared to how you damage your biggest uh hammer strike does six damage your jumps does three twice and he has one defense which makes it four hits instead of six four damage instead of six while the hammer does five and it's just like uh oh my god what am i gonna do like it it works well the lower, like the lo the lower the number you do in during an attack means so much more because it's easier to understand how much you're doing. Like in RPGs now, you can do like nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine and feel nothing. It's like yeah, that's a good crit right there, <laughs> but. <laughs> But the boss still might not die. Oh. I just... I might be going a little overcritical, but I kind of want to be in case Nintendo sees this. Which they won't. It's, it's actually honestly going to be pretty much just these two. For the most part. So, what was this? This was, this was combat. This is combat in these games. So, yeah. Uh, next one. Characters. Characters and design. Honestly. I'm going to put a sticker star here. And... You there. S, S, and S. I, I just I just love the way Color Splash looks. It, it it plays more on the crafted side and of the paper side of Paper Mario. Rather than Paper Mario, as what I'm quoting Scott Falco. <laughs> Instead of Paper Mario, it's Paper Mario. But like <laughs> Oh fuck. I could just go through this like just like this and then explain later. But I want to just go I want to just say as I go. Cuz honestly there's not that much to do deal with. How long is this though? <laughs> Almost an hour. So I spent probably 10 minutes trying to figure out how to start this. <laughs> I'm terrible at this. So yeah, all these games look look amazing because, well, except for this game, which honestly had the 3DS to work with, which the 3DS games can look good, but I think it kind of faltered a little bit. How it plays out. Uh, designs didn't really look too well. It didn't look very interesting. It's just grass world, earth world. Ice world. Moving on. <laughs> uh, the design for Super Paper Mario was amazing. It was, it was good. It kind of, hmm. it worked well with the 
it worked well with the 2D aesthetic and played on it a bit more. Like, wait, no, it didn't. It, it basically just looked like a stylized version of New Super Mario Brothers. So yeah, I'm gonna put you right there. The fuck. I don't know where to put you. I'm gonna put you right there. Yeah. All these up here were fucking interesting. Every level was interesting. It had amazing... All these games had amazing set pieces. They had amazing worlds. It had, like, aspects of each world that fit in perfectly with what it with what it was i i could i couldn't tell you what sticker star was <laughs> what worlds are sticker star even though i kind of just played two levels and then gave up <sighs> but yeah I've, like this this paper aesthetic is really pleasing to watch that's all i can really say about it moving on next one Oh, what's what should be you? What's next? Oh, another one. Uh, let's see. I talked about generally, generally liking them. Uh, the story, generalizing the story. Uh, the combat. Uh, design. Level design. Level design. Yes, level design. All right, hear me out though. I loved the level design in Color Splash. I adored the level design in Color Splash. Wait, hold on. Let me change something real quick. No. Yeah, level design. This one could be. What should be the? What should be this one? Uh, this one should be characters. This one should be characters and characters and writing. Yes, characters and writing. There we go. All right, back to this one. Uh, let's see. I loved the level design in this game. I loved it. Everything was was like ev everything had ev every level in this game was interesting. Everything had a meaning to a meaning meaning behind it. Everything like it, it everything just worked, just worked so well. And which makes me sad because I I don't like the little design for most of this game. Chapter four is a straight line. <laughs> Actually, most of the chapters are a straight line. One of the final levels is Actually no yeah, it is a straight line. The last level is a straight line to the boss. And not a dungeon. The second to the last level is a straight line stacked on top of each other. <laughs> is straight lines stacked on top of each other. The first level is a straight line. With a with one branching path. <laughs> and that is to get to the better dungeon. <laughs> Like, it just makes me angry how the how level design for that one how it went. On the other hand, the first game did it better. Everything was interesting. Uh, the boo level, you had to well the ha second half of the boo level was a straight line, but you had to go through like an entire mansion at the end of it to uh, uh, get. A certain part then go back through that line and unlock the actual boss 
Uh, there are a lot. There are lots of branching paths, and other things. It was just like did it so much better than Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. Um, I have no idea where this one goes because I've only played one level, but I assume it's not much different. So I'm gonna put you in D. Uh, this one, weirdly, for a game about a 2D, pl 2D playing field, the level design was kind of alright. Actually, I lied. Some of it was annoying. But yeah, like... Which actually is kind of, this is, uh, this is kind of funny, because it's the first one that's actually in, in a row. <laughs> but yeah. I just... I just love Color Splash's level design, man. Everything was just so interesting. Paper Mario 64, like, was, like, great. And then they... It was not perfect, but it was great. For, uh... It was great. And then... Paper Mario 2 came out. And just kind of spat on it. And said, you know what? We like lines. And it's kind of insulting to say this, but only <laughs> only three aspects of the game actually have good level design. Actually, have decent and good level design. It's kind of funny how I'm reaming on it now. But like I said, all the other aspects of Paper Mario just kind of don't matter. No. Like, the the faults in Paper Mario Thousand Year Door don't really matter when you look at everything else about it. You look at the lore, you look at the story, you look at the characters, which I'm getting to next. Uh, actually, it's a perfect segue to characters and writing. And I just gotta say, boop. Boop. And writing. Boop. Writing. Good. I'm going to put you there because I don't. Eh. Even though the. like. <laughs> oh boy. Fumbling again. Uh, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door is an amazingly written game. It's not the best, but it doesn't really play around. It doesn't make fun of itself. It doesn't really... It's a semi-serious type of game. Where uh, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door kind of... Pa Paper Mario plays on the seriousness that like Bowser is an actual villain in this game. Uh, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door plays on that more by being also semi-serious with really dark lore and backstories. Vivian is a character who is tormented by her older siblings and uh, Bobbery is a ex, used to be a ex sailor. To used to be an ex sailor because when he was out at sea, his wife died of a flu, and he blames he blames him being out at sea as a as a means to as a means to be mad at himself. Because he couldn't be there for his wife. Which, like, that means it's fucking sad. Coops is a depressed fucker because he... What is this? Because he feels like he's too weak to do anything. So he partners up with Mario to, like, be on an adventure. So partners up with Mario to strengthen himself. Goombella is not like Cabela is just there to look for treasure like 
Because she's interested in it. Because she's interested in the lore and things of this place. And she actually has, like, a little bit of sass to it. And I love it. She she oogles at um, the Yoshi kid. <laughs> she oogles at the Yoshi kid. Is like, oh, he's so, he's so, he's so cute. Oh, my God. I love you. He's so cute. I could just eat you up. Oh, my God. It's like, it's just... She's fucking adorable. Way better Goomba character and Tattle character than Goombario ever was. Uh, Flurry, despite the fact that I don't like her as much as a written character. No, as, as a character in the game at all. Uh, I do like her written backstory where she, uh, where she used to be a stage opera. A... You should be part of stage opera. She used to sing. She used to do plays. And she decided that it was a little too stressful for her. Or no. She decided she wants to take... Wanted to retire. I think I think it was retire. And... Just spend a life in the woods. For a, year, for a couple of years. Well, for, for the rest of her life, actually. And then she did that. And then didn't want... To be a part to be a part of life anymore she played she played with the punies a little bit and then help I don't, I don't know and then af after after traveling with Mario she decided that I want to get back into the into the life I want to get back into stages I want to I want to be part of a play again I want to be part of the light. I want the spotlight to shine down on me as people cheer for me. And, like, yeah! 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 Let's see, who else? The Yoshi Kid. The nameless Yoshi Kid that comes out of a fucking egg. That partners us because we saved it from a hot dog salesman who is a pig. <laughs> The hot dog, the hot dog salesman imported an egg from an exotic island, and <laughs> was going to put it on his hot dogs to sell. <laughs> Until the egg escapes, and then we save it. <laughs> and then after that, comes this little little punky kid, little punky Yoshi kid, that wants to be a part of wrestling. <laughs> And it's just like it's just an amazing premise for one character. <laughs> like, and after that, he he goes back to the Gliz Pit to become champion. And it's just like this is fucking amazing. All right, who's next? Ms. Mouse. Oh my God, Ms. Mouse. Oh my God, Ms. Mouse. <laughs> she owns a bad shop. She's a bad shopman by day, an extraordinary thief by night. <laughs> so kind of like Lupin, but extru but way more dangerous because no, a little less dangerous because no one's going after her because she steals badges that are from rumored locations. It's just like, <laughs> and she's such a good character for an optional one. Ah, uh, who else? I already talked about Vivian. Also, Vivian's character, completely new, out of like out of the blue. What is this species of Mario Mario character? I mean, she's a she's a siren, but that's I think that's the first time she that kind of character has ever been um, put into a Mario game. And like it hints at the fact that she could be part of she's sisters with Beldum and Marilyn. Marilyn, yeah. And it's and at the end of the game it's hinted at the fact that she was part of the demon. That they had to seal away. 
and she wasn't aware of any of it. I would have loved to have more lore about that, Nintendo. But I guess I'll have to hope on something else. Ah, enough about that. Paper Mario 64. Writing and characters. Writing is a pretty basic plot and premise, albeit done very well. Mario, no. Bowser goes to this new location in the Mario, Mario universe called Star Heaven, where wishes are granted, but not selfish ones. <laughs> wishes are granted as, uh, and the wishes are granted with the power of the Star Rod. Star Rod is incredibly powerful. If you wish for something, it will grant it. And the only people that are stopping that from happening are the owners, which are the star spirits. So Bowser said, nah, fuck that. I'm going to be the wish granter and all the wishes are going to be mine. And he almost wins. But the power of Peach and the little twink. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, it's it's just a good 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 like fucking story, and each aspect of it too. Like Cooper, I don't like him as much, man. He just kind of joins. He just kind of joins you because, yeah, you helped him get his shell back, I guess. Bombet is is a good character though. Bombet, uh, is Bombet. Uh, there is what was his name? That lack lack of Lester Bombet. Uh, Sushi is a kind of is a kind of good character, kind of good written character. Um, good room partner. What are you up to, phone? So, Sushi, Lack of Lester, Bombette. Um... Oh, fuck. Where is this? I'm trying to remember all the fucking characters. Hold on. No. No, that, that would spoil, spoil it. Mm. Ah, this fucking annoying me uh sparks what the fuck that spark is called i'm gonna call her sparks uh sparks lack of lester bombet sushi is kind of good character uh who else Fuck it. Which one am I thinking of? Don't look. <laughs> Cooper's kind of bland. Boo. Lady Boo. Or, no, Lady Bo. Lady Bo was a good good written character. She is the owner of the haunted mansion, and and is a no and has a problem because the guy because there is a grubba who is so big, and his favorite snack is ghosts, so he eats them. And is invincible. So, <laughs> and and this grubba tubble, tubble blubba <laughs> has the job of guarding the star spirit, but the star spirit escapes <laughs> somehow 
but then falls into the clutches of the <laughs> of Lady Bo and strikes a deal with Mario. Uh, she <laughs> they then they then team up to go fight Tubble over there is a bug on my screen and it flew away. All right. Lady Bo, yes. It's just fucking Ah. This is so hard for me. <laughs> After you defeat Tubba Bubba, she decides that, yes, this is so much fun. So much more fun than fucking staying in a goddamn haunted mansion doing nothing. <laughs> but it turns out Tubba Bubba was actually a victim because the boo is just like scaring people. <laughs> and Tubba Bubba had enough. And Bowser asked him to make him inv invincible. So, he made, so Bowser just took out his heart that had all the feelings in it and locked it away, <laughs> which is kind of a funny premise. Also, Bombette. Bombette is really good. Uh, Bombette is a great character. She gets locked up because she started to rebel from the Koopa Bros. Start the belt from the Cooper Bros, and upon meeting Mario, uh, decides that hey, if I can help you, I can stop, I can stop this once and for all. I can help stop this once and for all, and take put things back to normal, and maybe take control of the fucking fortress. It's a good premise. That last part might not be true. I'm gonna join. I'm gonna join you, Mario, so I can get my revenge on these fucking Cooper Bros that locked me up. My God, <laughs> I think Bombette is the only best character. Is the best character from that. Also, the Star Spirits, all different, all different um, uh, character, caricatures of. Uh, stereotypes. One is lovely. One is like a. One is cute. One is lovely. One is a know-it-all. The other is. Oh boy, this is getting harder and harder. It's just a good game. I need to move on. Uh, color splash. Despite the fact that almost all the characters are carbon copies of each other, every single one of them is well written. Every single one of them is well written. And the Shy Guys do an amazing job at being an accessory to the villain. Because, one, they're useful. They're useful and they're more like Zergs as a character. Because they, they are more like Zergs as a, as a uh, type of enemy. Because uh, in most of, most of the games that we've seen, seen them in, they work under one mind. Uh, in Paper Mario 64, there was the general who got named top dog and everyone followed him and they're good at, at what they do they're threatening in color splash almost all of them are shy guys but in color splash it really set, sets on to the point that each of them have uh certain emotions that they that they express certain um certain characteristics, certain emotions, certain desires, and other things. Like that scene on the train with the shy guy? I loved it! <laughs> it's like, I don't want to do this, but I have to. It's just so good, man. 
<sighs> okay, moving on. All, actually, all, all the toads are written well. The tire written, Huey's written, written well, even though most of the writing in the game itself just kind of pokes fun at everything. This really just pokes fun at itself, at Mario itself as a game franchise. It's just light banter, light banter, nothing really too serious about the writing, which is a shame, but it works, it works well in Color Splash. All right, moving on to Super Mario, another Serious-ish game. Uh, game premise. Mario in this game feels to be a bit more of... Color Splash's Mario. Which is weird because Mario's a mute... Mute guy that doesn't do anything. He feels like he has more emotion and more depth in these two games than he ever does in any other game. <laughs> Super Mario was a good premise. You have to stop a bad guy from destroying every world because he was in love with someone that he couldn't be with. Well, it was in love with something that he couldn't be with. And so his clan decided to off her. <laughs> It's like, you are not allowed. You are not. You are not allowed to to make relations with this with this girl. But father, I love her. We are a clan of demons, and we will destroy the world. So he stole the. So he stole the, the dark pragmaticus, and wanted to destroy the world because his lover wasn't in it anymore. He wanted to destroy all worlds because his lover wasn't in them. At the end, he kind of feels bad that, oh no, what have I done? <sighs> just like, Bloomier or Count Black in general is just a good written character. The other ones don't hold a candle to them at all, even though some of them are written well. well. That's pretty much all I can say about Super Paper Mario. I have nothing to say in Sticker Star. It feels like machined light banter. It feels machined. And I feel like Color Splash didn't have as much... What song is this? Silent Moonlight from Undernight. Nice. Uh, Color Splash felt more like less machined and more writers just fucking eh. Alright, let's just go ham with the writing rather than making it feel robotic. putting in references I'm going back to pit fucking color splash again but yeah sticker star from what I've seen it's all right it it would it would have gotten the job done if I stuck with it but I don't think I will want to ever go back to there all right now it's time for the needy for the nitty-gritty it's time to go to characters Characters! All these cool characters! <laughs> Alright, first of all, Bombay is good, but you're not the best. S. SS. All the punies. Yep, all the punies. Whoever made this decided that all the punies should have a spotlight. <laughs> Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Twelve times, but no. One two times seven equals eighty-four plus the eight. Eighty-four plus the eight, which is ninety-two plus one two three four five six seven eight plus another eight equals a hundred. Plus Punio, which makes 101. Which I don't understand why there isn't Puniper or Petuni. <laughs> yeah, that's all 100 punies minus Puniper and Petuni, but it does have Punio. Or Jabble. What? Where's Jabble? What is this? How are you going to put all the characters in here but not put Puniper, Pute, Petuni, and Jabble? Also, by the way, uh, going back on Paper Jam comment, Ray, uh, here's Luigi from... <laughs> here's Luigi from Mario and Luigi Paper Jam. <laughs> Also, Paper Mario from Paper Mar from Paper Jam. <laughs> Amazing. All right, so let's get this off the bat. One, two, and where is he? What? How do you not have the- Okay, there he is. <laughs> I love these three characters more than any other character in the entire game. S. A. B. C A B C D So apparently this person really hated Flurry and really liked Bombette. <laughs> Paper Mario Paper Mario Partners May 2020 your opinion tier list maker <laughs> Who made this? Jelly Ultra. That is a good name. I wish I thought of that. I'll I'll get I'll get more into these into these after after I finish making this list. This this is gonna consume a lot. <laughs> a lot of time. Uh let's see. Lack of Lester? Amazing character. I should probably put more rows. All right, next we got Spike Shields. B, he did it did his job. A B C D E F F. Get out of my game. <laughs> Get out of my game. There we go. That's a, that's a good one. <laughs>
Uh, I know who to put there too, I think. <laughs> Alright. Pixels are either B or C. <laughs> Coming at ya, get a watch that. Coming at ya. Coming at ya, better watch that. Coming at ya, watch that. Coming at ya. The puny horde. That is not how you spell horde. What the f- how do you spell horde? <laughs> Brain, please! Horde. It has an- It has an E at the end. <laughs> there we go, puny horde. There's one, two, three, four, shit, five, six, seven, eight, not, no, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. You know what? Fuck it. I'm not f wasting all that fucking space. Petuni, Puniper, Jabble. There we go. Why did why why did it go over there? Wait, hold on. That's that's the enter key. What? Shit. There we go. All right, now I can move on. Pixels are going all in B. They were all right and kind of worked with the story, but having to use have the hero having to use them. Actually, I like this one a lot more. Uh, Philippe was pretty cool. Bomb was pretty cool. Fucking, yes, Girth. <laughs> girth! Girth! Uh, Hammer. Nah. Uh, when did I get him? This one, this 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 one had a cool premise. Um, it was it was an optional pixel, but oh my god, H having having this one equipped, having this one equipped and using the action changed. Uh, had had music depending on what character you played as. Also, all the sound effects changed to classic retro bit. <laughs> Which was fucking amazing. I liked it. 
All right, next pixel. First pixel, I liked it. This one's slim. Blech. Might get copyrighted for this one. Too hype. Sure. I like Punio. I'll put you in A. Uh, let's see. Bo? Good character. I fucking hate Gumbario. Actually, no. I kind of like him. He shouldn't get out of it. I think he should have been changed, but whatever. I liked you. You're good in combat, and you were basically just fucking stolen as some dude's light. Also, this is not Tippy. This is Tippy. This is Tiptron. Which is a extra that you get from beating the game. <laughs> and yes, I did buy it. <laughs> Fucking, who was he? Francis, yes. Francis made a Tiptron... A tippy replica robot. I fucking love it. <laughs> it does the ex the exact same thing as what Tippy does, but with a different look. Cause Tippy Tippy died. I don't maybe not. I don't I don't know. Alright, Goombella. I liked you a lot. It's really cute. Coops? Yes. Ms. Mouse, I liked you a lot. Bombette, I liked you a lot. I fucking hate you, Cooper. <laughs> uh, let's put you in A. Uh, let's see. I, I I really liked I really liked him as as a character in Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. I think most of it was most of going to him and talking about uh, the talking about the crystal stars felt a little bit padding, but his input was really interesting. He actually did something rather than Merlon. Actually, now, now that I think about it, where the fuck are all the Merlons? <laughs> oh wait, it's partners. Oh, I see. These are all the partner characters. Oh yes, this is this is Bobby. Uh, I like Bobby. <laughs> Olivia, I feel like she's going to do her job. Uh, let's see. There's sushi. I liked sushi a lot. And that's saying a lot. I liked Flurry a lot. As a written character, but not as a character in the game. She I, she didn't have much input on anything. Oh, this is the sticker star Goomba. Flavio? Yes! <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. Gonna 
Actually, I'm going to put... Nah. Yes, I'm going to put... Him there, because that is Muzz Yoshi's... But what, what was her name? Muzz. Yeah, Muzz Yoshi. And she... She, she speedruns this game. Wait, that's the wrong... Wrong... There we go. She speedruns this game. And she makes... Um, Paper Mario avatars for people. <laughs> I, 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 I like her. So I'm putting her... Up here. No. There we go. <laughs> Not as good as Flavio... <laughs> But yeah, that that's the only reason why she's up, why this one's up there. Some bias. What is this? What what toad is this? What different kind of toad is this? E. Wait a second. This is the toad captain from the uh, that one that lost his memory. I liked him. He's all right. Pear carry. Good premise. I, I like him as a character. It's like, uh, hey, I need I need to find some mail. Uh, you're you're traveling around around the entire area, right? Uh, do do you mind if I tag along and so you can help me find them? That that's it. Luigi is a good partner. <laughs> Fuck out of here. The good times. A friend of mine. Goodbye. Toad Horde! Toad Horde! Actually, no, that's not true. Uh, toad stack. <laughs> what? Toad stack. What? Who are these? Of course, the fucking egg. Which is terrible at its own. Until you reach this. So, yeah. We're not going to pay attention to any of this, because whoever thought of this missed Pituni, Jun uh, Puniper, and Jabble, which, makes, which annoys me a little bit, but whatever. We'll meet again. There we go. It's closer together. Alright, so my reasoning behind this list I mean I don't know why there okay, I, I kinda do know why there's a couple different colored Yoshis because there were different colored Yoshis with different hairstyles. So Vivian Best Paper Mario character, hands down. I love her. She is amazing. Her backstory is amazing. Oh god, no, I can't. I'm sorry, this is my favorite song. Sure, let's do this one. Is that too loud? No, it's not. Good. So yeah, um, Vivian, best Paper Mario character ever, and kind of kind of annoys me that we don't have partners anymore because we can't have someone that can contend 
with this anymore. Or as as many. We, we still get partner characters. I mean, we have Olivia. Yeah, we have Olivia. We have whatever partner characters are here. Da, 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 da. Where's Kamek? Kamek joined. Like, this is May 2020. Did Kamek get announced then? No, he got announced after May. But yeah, this is. Uh, Vivian, a great vision character. She is a siren, which is hinted at that she is part of the demon that we had to seal away in Thousand Year Door. Which I think is an amazing premise. And the only reason why she's not a villain is because <laughs> we were nice to her. We were nice to her and her sisters were just absolute fucking trash. But yeah, she, she, she's just a well well written character. She is, she is shy, but if if you hear her dialogue options, she's smart. She knows what to do. She like, she's very resourceful and just fucking yeah. She's a good character. She's smart. She's cute. Also, Tippy, Tippy is just an amazing character. Uh, a well-written character. Also, I just love that butterfly aesthetic. The uh, fly is back on my screen. I think I got him. Anyway. Tippy's just a, a well-written character. She has a lot of emotion scripted into her. And just... While being, like very quiet and like honestly kind of sad at the start at the, at the start of super mario she opens up and honestly really cares and kind of expresses her emotions and feelings towards people the same with vivian she opens up extremely at the end even kind of hints that she wanted to be with mario huey is great on a completely other another level. Huey was just this kind of like <laughs> just this bro gets fucking angry and just like is very emotion like emotionally driven. An emotionally driven character that doesn't It's hard to describe how I feel about Huey. I just like him as a character. He's a paint can Oh my god. <laughs> I just enjoyed my time being, like, traveling with him. Oopsies. Yep, there we go. Oh boy. <laughs> this is getting harder for me to explain. Also, Tiptron. It's there because... While also a great character, it's just Tippy, but robotic. Hence why it's an SS, not SSS. Bobbery! Amazing character! Wife dies, blames him being at sea for not... Blames the sea for not being... For not being able to be near his wife. Uh... What is it? What is his name? Girth Pixel. <laughs> no, not on here. Girth Pixel. Thudley. His name's Thudley. <laughs> Thudley the Pixel. Ah, <laughs> oh, he's amazing. Just, just his intro alone. It's like, yo, you got enough. Girth be swinging that around. <laughs> just all the 
the pixels in general are like, bruh, who wrote you? <laughs> and why didn't they care? <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> Oh my god. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, okay, next. I forget which pixel you find on top of a mountain and you scream. I think it might have been... Ham? Hammer? Whatever this pixel is. But yeah. Goombella, amazing character, amazing written character. Cooper, Coops, Coops, amazing written character. Mal is amazing written character. Bombay, amazingly written character. Well, not uh, not to the extent as these as these are, but in sixty Paper Mario sixty four, she was kind of the best written character as a partner. Flavio, he needs no explanation of why he's he's on SS tier. The only reason why he's not on SSS tier is because he doesn't do anything. But he, but his existence makes the game so much better. <clears throat> it's terrible. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, this version of the Yoshi is only here because, well, Muzz Yoshi. I fucking love her art. Art and, like, her Thousand Year Door styled uh, icons. I love them. Next, uh, Lackluster, amazing character. I, I kind of just blew past this, didn't I? I did already explain this in uh, characters. Uh, characters are written, char uh, written, written in characters, but these are just kind of like the best of the best kind of. It's like it's just an amazing character, a fucking. Thuggin' dude with a <laughs> with a less than desirable name <laughs> Lack of Lester Lady Bo, good character. It's honestly the best combat character. <laughs> I just like him. It's like me, I'm Bobby. <laughs> me, I'm Bob <laughs> Me? Well, I'm Bob Bomb. I just fucking love that line. Mainly because it's just a reference to uh just a reference to Final Fantasy 7, which is kind of hilarious in its own right. Uh Sushi, good character. Babysits all these fuckers. These rambunctious fuckers. Uh uh. Yeah. I forgot his name. Pe Pear Carry. Another amazing combat character. Just blows through everything. And good premise for a partner. It's like, hey, can I have help finding my? Can I can I join you on your quest so I can find these letters? Uh, pixels. Uh, they kind of sit where they are. The ones on the top do a better job. Do a better job at, well, being a part of the game. This guy's optional. This guy's optional. This guy's optional. This guy's optional. I just hate this guy. This guy is so optional. His power up is that you is that he runs. He runs he runs away from battles. Why do you want to get into a fight when you can just run away and live to see another day? <laughs> I don't I don't even know who this guy is. Pixels. All right, back to Pixels. Pixel. Uh
This is a good artist thing about them. This is a good artist. There's Tiptron, Tippy, Berry, which has a barrier. There's Slim, which puts you. Hold on. There we go. There's Tippy, which is your main partner in that game. There is Thoreau, which is the hand one. There's Boomer, which is the bomb. Slim, which is the triangle. Thudly, which is the trapezoid with eyes. Carry is the box T. Fleep is the big square. Kudge. Kudge! That's his name! I love that name! You know what? Fuck it. <laughs> You're going to ST just because of that name, my boy. <laughs> also, he's very useful, if I remember correctly. Uh, Kudge, Dottie, which turns you small. We can still damage enemies, they just can't see you. Uh, I, I, I do love... I, I, I do love Dottie, because based, just based on the... Uh, Wait, who is this? Other pixels. Oh! <laughs> you know, I'm surprised there isn't bread word now. I forgot. I forgot about bread word. Dottie is the one that helps this guy get out and avoid and avoid all the uh, the robots. And I think he gets stepped on by something. Anyway, uh, Barry is optional. You beat Chapter Two and then go back and talk to him. All he does is just gives you a barrier, which is like a shine. Uh, Dashel is the there's Dashel, which is this guy. There is where is he? Uh, Piccolo, which is the music note, and Tiptron, which says it's SS. Also, this guy right here is the ladder pixel. Uh, let's see. In a pre-release version of Super Paper Mario, a ladder... A ladder-like pixel that did not make it into the final game can be found. Uh, an unseen and unnamed pixel is mentioned by Hieronicus. Speak to him at the after the game is beaten. Reveal he spent much of his life seeking the legendary a legendary pixel. For a rock slide to occur the moment he found it. Uh, focus to choose between his comrade and the pixel. Hieron oh yeah, that's the guy in that beaten up game that beaten up house chooses to save his friend and the pixel was lost forever ah so that's just the play on the fact that he didn't make it into the game that's all right you know that that premise that that premise is good i like that you go you go up here with your buddy piccolo <laughs> All right, next. Uh, Barry, Barry and Dashel are staying in B. Olivia, I have not. I don't. I've not seen a deep amount of Olivia to really understand her character. It, in all honesty, she just feels like a, co a copy of Huey. But without any real kind of discernible qualities, so you're staying at B, because if if because e even a, a carbon copy of Huey, you're pretty good. <laughs> and that's just based. <laughs> that's just biased. But other than that, Olivia just feels like a carbon copy of Huey. A Slim. I hate Slim. He's used. Twice in the entire game. That's it. That's it. 
<laughs> he has no other purpose of being in the game. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Goompa, that's his name, Goompa. Uh, Goompa is a good character because he gives you the hammer. <laughs> also, he sh he's just a cool guy. He's just a cool old dude. That's all I have. Um, Toad Captain. Meh. He sailed the seas, and uh, he sailed the seas on the, sh on the on his ship, and then what, as he went into the as he went to the lost world, as he went to like, the lost island for buried treasure, he he conked his head and forgot everything of why he was there, but he found a thing which made grills. <laughs> Which was a grill. He's like, "Hey, man, you want some, uh, you want some, uh, some sausages?" And then you just pick it up and squeeze it. He's like, "Oh, man, that's not cool. I'm gonna annoy you by following you." And that's it. <laughs> uh, Cooper, I hate him. He just joins you because you got a shell back, and not to be better as a person. You just kind of, you know what? You're cool. Let me hang out with you. I don't. Hmm. Same with Flurry. Her, her character is well written, but she doesn't add to anything. Other than the other other than when you meet her and at the end of the game. That's it. Uh Gumbario, uh if I have a little ounce of likeness to you. Other than that just why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> you could have been so much better. He's a smart kid, but... I just hate him. There's no other reason why... Why he's there, he's there. I just don't like him. Also, the egg is is right next to him because... It's got no discernible qualities until... Until these guys show up. Alright. I have no idea who this is uh, as a character. Just a Goomba. A creased Goomba. One singular toad. And a toad stack. Which I assume is from Color Splash based on the detail on these portraits. Uh, This guy's from... This guy is from uh, Sticker Star though. I don't know who he is. I don't know where you find these guys in Sticker Star, but I guess they're in there too. Uh, this one is spe specifically to whoever made this fucking tier list. Why didn't you have Puniper, Petuni, and Jabble? Honestly, the best partners. And um, you can just fucking get out of the entire game. Please. Honestly, uh, this this is a side tangent. I would love if the next Paper Mario game to have Tippy as a as a background character, just you know, exists just to like exist and like acknowledge Super, Super Paper Mario. It's like, oh yeah, that did actually happen. Which I find just hilarious on its own. Alright. Fuck all of these. They these guys just add nothing. They just put them there. <laughs> these all have good good like character and narratives that like eh, it's just another puny. Let's just frickin' Alright, I'm nitpicking. Alright, time for the last one. The last one. How long have I been doing this? Two hours. Are you serious? I've been talking for two hours about this. God. Uh, Twink. Alright, character. I forgot to mention about him. 
Twink's an alright character. He gets the job done. Alright. Now. Yep. Uh, yep, that's it. That's it. <laughs> that, that's, that's the first two off, off the list. That's the first two off the list. All right, we're moving. This one is just going, it's not, it's not going to be a, a partner list in likability. This is going to be a partner list in functionality and what they do. Um... I, I'm, I'm just gonna be completely biased here. I, uh, bomb it, and you go here. This is just in what they do and how useful they are. What is this? What what is this? Is is this just like the? Why didn't you get the character render from the flat? Oh my god, these tier lists are making me angry. Why didn't you just use the fucking character art from the game? What is this, like, fucking... Like, thousand year door rip. Like, custom character bullshit. Alright, honestly... Vivian is not as useful. She... Uh, we have to use her gimmick a couple times but honestly she's not useful she she is useful in the um combat because she can set people on fire with successful strikes and that big finger wa finger waggle attack just fucking burst everyone is everyone into flames for like i don't know five damage each which is amazing what render is this? Lack of Lester? You're B. Uh, Coops, you're not as useful. Lady Bo, I'm gonna put you up, up, uh, there. You're useful on the field, but not much in game. Paracarry, you're very useful. Uh, Coops, very useful. In, in in the respective games, Coops is very useful for what he can do. Uh, Coops kind of just like, hey, if you see something in a far off distance, but in shell range, I can get it for you. Other than that, is it's used like a couple times. Sushi, very useful. Sparks. Not that useful in the game, in in like auto combat, but he he just goes through shields, man. He just eats people alive. Five damage that just goes right through shield. Five piercing damage, which is amazing. And can fucking charge you up. So actually, I'm gonna go here. See, for the amount of it just goes around. You can speed up, just go at a faster pace. Also get across gaps, so I guess that's what pair carry does. And, uh, Ms. Mouse. Now, the reason why she's up here is because you can tattle literally everything. And it just gives you, like, a better insight on everything. Other than Goombario. We should go and see, though. Uh, I think this is good. I think this is good for the for this tier list. So yeah, Goombella, amazingly, amazingly useful, even for combat. She's really good. She's actually exceptional at combat. Uh, and still useful. She has a multi-bonk attack. She has... What is it? 
smooch, which has, which gives Mario an extra, an extra attack, which is fucking incredible. Uh, him, I don't understand why, but he's used so much more. Extremely useful. Boring inclusion. Eh. Well designed. So, these two are very useful out outside outside the field. Uh, other than running, not very good. Uh, Vivian, other than a few times, not that good. Combat's good too. Gets the job done. Uh, gets the job done. Uh, let's see. What should A be? Well, that's the case. You should go back there. Uh, useful outside the stage, useful outside and in battle. Extremely useful. Helpful and useful. Oh shit! That was a mistake. I actually pressed F11. Extremely helpful and useful. Uh, A. Great in combat. More utilized. Uh, perfectly utilized. Perfectly utilized. Underutilized. Koops is underutilized. Not really good combat moves. Except for his most damaging attack, which pierces. Uh, underutilized. His... So Spark's ability is to light up areas, which is kind of underutilized. In combat, he's amazing. Vivian is amazing in combat, but only really uses her ability in a couple locations. Two I can name. Two I can name right now. It's uh, Fort. Next, not Fortress on the moon, and. In the chapter she is, she's uh, introduced in. Other than running around, he's not useful. Other than running around and crossing gaps, he's not useful. In combat, he's even less useful. Oh, 
he has an ability that has it's called mini egg where it has a and a weirdly high chance to shrink enemies in and bosses most bosses Ms. Mao's her ability in the field is to locate treasure that's it uh her her attacks can go through uh, go through armor, which is good. And she can steal. So, she's... I mean, actually, not that I think about it, she's perfectly utilized. She's not... She's optional if you want to get... I'm gonna, I'm gonna go here. She's underutilized. It couldn't be like an optional area. Well, no, because she, she's because she's optional, which means she's perfectly utilized. She's optional. She, she's not needed to beat the final game. Beat the final area. Uh, Coops is more utilized in this game. It's utilized more utilized, perfect, perfectly utilized in. T2YD. Uh, it's just, it's just, my brain juices are, are stop, are trying to stop floating. Oh no. Yeah, I'm just gonna. There you go. So yeah, this is the tier list. This is the tier list. Goombella, extremely helpful and useful. Tattling enemies, also giving her like two cents. Into what enemies, what the enemy is, how to deal with them. It's just an all-around good, good, good character. Perfectly utilized, bomb, uh, Bobbery, Bombette, just good. There's a lot of places that you use to blow up stuff, which is weird. Uh, Paracarry. There is a surprising amount of gaps in. <laughs> there is there is a surprising amount of gaps that you need to that you need f uh, to cross with Paracarry. Coops is does the same uh, does the exact same job as as a uh, Cooper as Cooper. But like it in the game, it does it more perfectly that utilizes their their ability sushi again there is an enormous amount of water in that game that you can swim in ms mouse is perfectly utilized because she's optional matter of fact i think she's the only optional character in the series in the first two games sure uh, Cooper underutilized. I think we only use him a couple times. Uh, Lack of Lester could have been utilized more to get across chasms. I can think of a couple places: the, the chapter where he's introduced and uh, the final area. I think I, I got across lava, and then in the chapter he's introduced, it's. Fuck. Uh, it's... Thorns. Thorny vines. Lady Bow. Again. Barely useful. Not really good in combat. Uh, not really good in combat. She can scare people away. Which I don't think gives you star points. She's got a slap move. Baby Yoshi. Yoshi. The Yoshi kid is kind of bleh. It's really bleh because he, he's not even good in combat except for like one battle where you need him to move on. His ground stop does one damage, which if you're if you have one defense and a spike, he's not gonna do anything to you. 
Uh, Vivian, although amazing, amazing in combat, she isn't really utilized that much. And Sparks, amazing again, amazing in combat like Vivian, but can charge you up, give you an extra, give you an extra like um extra kick to your attack, and just go through defense. But is only really used in a couple areas, which makes me sad. <laughs> so yeah. Let's go back to Let's go back to this. This is pretty much basically what it what it what it has been. And I'm going to do something a little extra. Where is it? Origami King. going right in B and it kind of hurts me to say this because I, I I've never played this game it's not even out yet it comes out in seven days I've seen I haven't really seen the in-depth like uh, gameplay of it I've seen enough I've seen snippets of it but like it's just gonna be another game with poor execution It is actually, it's actually going to be, I, th I think it's going to be like Color Splash 2, mostly. So there's that one. Uh, let's see, this this was just the, the general feel of it. General feel. My guess is get, it's going to be B. I'm going to be I'm gonna enjoying the writing. Enjoy the depth, depth of the characters. The, the surprising depth of the characters. Uh, but. I just want it to be more. I, wa I want it to be like. Like these two up here. I want it to be these two here. But I can't. But I can't because that's probably never going to happen again. Shit. I kicked my. Excuse my bag. My bag? My barrel. Just. I want you to be good. I really want you to be good. But I don't think you're going to be on any level you think you're going to be you think you're achieving. And which hurts me because I didn't watch the gameplay myself. I wanted to get surprised. Honestly, I think that's going to be what helps what what is going to help you in liking this game because I've seen it I, I know what the bosses are, which honestly they shouldn't have done at all. Uh, I've seen the combat. It's 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 just fucking sticker star again, but with more durability for for weapons. But I, I, if if you want want to say surprise, I won't I won't I won't say more about that. Um. Partners, the the partners <laughs> in the game are kind of just Mario enemies with more pepper in their just more pepper and salt in their dialogue. That's it. And it annoys me. And the same thing for every other game, every other category. Story. Uh. Actually, this one's gonna be funny. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, add row below. Some guy. <laughs> Watch the. F Some guy comes and folds us.
some guy comes. Turn everything into origami. Which isn't the which isn't the whoa -oh, Bowser Bowser's at it again premise, but it's something different. In fact, Bowser kind of gets his ass handed to him, <laughs> which is funny. <laughs> so yeah, it's he's he's going down here. Some guy wants to turn everything into origami. That's the presence. That's the presence of what I know so far. And we have an enemy working with us to stop enemy-ish. Working with us to stop her brother. I, I, f I forget what your name is. King Oliver? I think it's Oliver. Anyway. Uh, back to this one. This one! Again, I, I gotta say, you're going back down the air. I've I've seen the gameplay. It's it's interesting. It's an interesting concept to put to put in an RPG. But I I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I've I've been told like it's like TTYD again. No, no, it's not. It's it's not. Which fucking makes me sad Fuck, I keep talking about it spoiling it for funny fox money uh what what is this oh oh yes this 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 one fucking hands down you're going up here in fact in front it just looks fucking amazing. It looks so goddamn good. Like, I, I I like the fact that it's going with paper theme because it can use the paper aesthetic to make it look even better. Also, this is karma. What? Whatever. We're getting hyped. <laughs> Using paper aesthetic, they can use um, gold paper, they can use tin foil, they can use fucking pipe cleaners. Actually, I haven't I haven't seen pipe cleaners yet. Also, the things in Color Splash is just <laughs> it feels so out of place, but it's so funny. Da 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 yeah, um, it's gonna look fucking beautiful, man. It's gonna look fucking phenomenal. Uh, this one is characters, uh, written, writing, and characters. Again, it's gonna go up here. Because it's going to have a lot of emphasis on, on the writing. To try and save this game. <laughs> uh, let's see. What's next? This one is... What was this one? Ah, yes. Level design. And I don't know if this is a hundred percent true. I, I just heard it from Scott Falco, but I think they were they were saying that if it's um, going to be uh, what was it? Fuck! What was it? It's gonna be what? 
it, it, it wasn't going to use the same kind of level, level level design basis of color splash, but with the same kind of depth it, if, of it. It was going to have... Um, God damn it. God damn it. I, I, I forgot. I can't think of the word. Oh boy, I can't think of it. Open world. That's the one. There we go. Open world. And if that's true, open world with the depth of the levels of Color Splash, that's going to appear. In fact, that's going to be above <laughs> Color Splash. It's just... These two games are open worlds. Nope, wait, hold on. There we go. These two games are open world. This one's not so much. This one's more of a more of a level basis, and this one plays even further on that by actually putting it as Super Mario Brothers level design, and then that one plays on it more, but having it feel more open, feel more open, where meaning you can go to anywhere you want. But for this one to be open worlds with this makes it amazing. I mean, of course, it depends on whether it's going to look like this, this, or this. It really depends. But uh, it, it's going to be fucking amazing if it, if it is. Next. Ah, oh, yes, this is design. S combat. That's characters and writing. All right, it, I think we're done. I think we got gone through all of them. So yeah, my final verdict of a game that I haven't. No, don't open up MS Paint. <laughs> there we go. It, it's gonna be here because it. They're expanding what they can do with it, but like. It's not going to be good. It's not going to be... Well, it, it is going to be good. It's going to get the job done. But I just... It doesn't feel like Paper Mario... Like, well, it is pa it's Paper Mario. But like... What was this? This one. I, I, I forgot to mention that this one doesn't feel like a Paper Mario game. It feels like... A Mario game with RPG and the Paper Mario aesthetic. That's it. I forgot to mention that before, which makes uh, mad now that I forgot about it. But yeah, that's basically my thoughts about the about all this. At the end of the day, I still love to play the play these two games over and over and over again, and I am I am happy that Paper Mario still gets new games. I think he's he, he's gotten one for every console that they've had. For every main console they had, except for Sticker Star, which was on the, which, which was on the 3DS. Uh, 64, GameCube, Wii. Wii U. And Switch. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that Paper Mario is getting more games. I, I'm sad that it's not the direction... Of where it was going, but I, I can just I can only hope that is going to be like every I can I can only hope, even though I've lost all faith that we're going to get one. I can only hope that we're going to get games like these again. Yeah, I think this is my shortest stream yet. No, it's no, it wasn't that. Yes, it was. It, it is my sort of stream. That's all I can do. That's all I can really say on this topic. So yeah, thank you for watching me ramble and fumble through over my words about a game series I love. I'm probably not going to do this again. I, I probably will marathon games. Mar marathon an entire series again, depending on 
what franchise it is, but um, I, I I did enjoy this. I did like going back through all the all the games and playing them, see what changed and see what was great about them. But pl please, Nintendo, please, please bring back the first two games. It was nice listening. I don't know about that. <laughs> But yeah, thanks. Thanks for your nice compliment. Yeah, uh, that's it. That's all I got. So yeah, um, what is today's Friday? That's right, today's Friday. Tomorrow, I'm going to go back to playing uh, Bug Fables. <laughs> oh boy, Bug Fables. It's really scratching my itch for Paper Mario. No, not that, not that one. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Bug Fables is an amazing game. And if you have 20 bucks to spare, go play it. It will definitely scratch your Paper Mario itch. It's just so good. Not not great. Not, not, not perfect. Not perfect. But it is definitely an amazing game. Made by people who understand what made Paper Mario great. <laughs> So yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you all tomorrow for uh, Bug Fables. And yeah, goodbye. <laughs>